Hey, it's Clay. We are gonna be talking about a topic that really is a, a must understand, and that is five rules that are designed to help you avoid what you see on the screen, right? Failure, of course we wanna avoid failure, and the sad part is 90% of traders do fail. And I don't wanna start this out off with negativity, but here's a, the honest truth about day trading, swing trading, the stock market, really anything, you need to focus on the negativity. And as humans, we don't want that, we want positive, we always want hey, good emotions, and that's totally fine, right? That's actually very healthy, but that's why trading can be so difficult because what we normally want from a human, from an emotional perspective, is not what we need, and we need some negativity. So that's why I'm starting off kind of on the negative note, talking about failure and how most people fail. But here's the other thing is, and this is quite frankly a very big fact, and I have this from a lot of uh, my YouTube channel data. I mean, I've been doing this since 2013, and I say that because you can always tell what videos are gonna get a lot of views and which ones are not. And this is gonna be one where a lot of you are gonna turn this off as soon as I say the following. These five rules have nothing to do with making money. I'll say that again so it can sink in. These five rules that I'm about to talk about have nothing to do with making money. And that's going to cause, like I said, the vast majority say, what, what, these rules have nothing to do with making money? See you later, bye-bye. And those people are gonna leave. And then you can stop and think about it. All right, so most people leave, yet most people, because they want the exciting stuff, fail. Things that make you go, huh. Most people are gonna leave, because most people want the exciting stuff, as in you know stuff that has to do with making money, yet most people fail. I think there might be some sort of correlation. Sure, I'll be the first to admit, it is fun to focus on making money and winning and all that stuff, but let's focus on what actually matters, and that's what these five rules are going to be all about. So rule number one, and it's more so kind of a goal too, so all the ones are definitely just rules, but this also has kind of a goal attribute to it too. And it's all based on one of the more famous quotes out there, and I see it all the time, and it just makes me shiver when I see traders using it. But from Warren Buffett, rule number one, never lose money. Rule number two, never forget rule number one. Listen, Warren Buffett's clearly a very bright person, but you always gotta be careful. Don't take quotes out of context and what they're referring to. And this is definitely not a quote that's being referred to trading. Whether, you're, like I said, you're day trading or swing trading, trading futures, trading crypto, this is not what you should be applying. The true rule, and why it's number one, is lose money, okay? Lose money, but let's add in a word here, wisely. Now, what exactly does wisely mean? In a way that shows experience, knowledge, and good judgment. So we wanna lose money in a way that shows experience, knowledge, and good judgment. So rule number one is lose money wisely, all right? And that's also the goal, right? The goal is, hey, you know what? Let's lose money wisely. And then all of these other rules that we're gonna talk about are gonna force you to focus on the experience, knowledge, and good judgment of losing money. Please just give me a chance. If you're still with me, you made it through the first part. I get it, this sounds bizarre, wait. Why, we, we're lo why is number one goal to lose money? Well, th that's not quite right. We wanna lose money wisely, but let's just keep on moving. This is all going to tie together, and once again, this is what actually matters. And on that note, I would encourage you, if you do know somebody that's a successful trader or successful in the markets in any way, uh, ask them, go through these rules and say, hey, would you agree, does this stuff matter, or is it all, all, all about just winning, winning, winning? And if they're successful, they'll be like, no, that's actually what does matter. So just keep that in mind. If, if, if you doubt any of this, that's fine. I, I get it, I, this could be the first video of mine you watch. Go find somebody you trust that is an experienced trader and say, hey, do these rules actually, I mean, is this the truth? Is this what truly matters? And I think that'll open your eyes. So let's move on to rule number two now. Ignore the ego. Ignore the ego. So what is an ego? Well, it's a person's sense of self-esteem or self-importance. So really the ego has two parts. So let's for, uh, first focus on this one. A person's sense of self-esteem, right? How they feel about themselves. And the thing is, and I get it, There's it's a fine line. You wanna show up into the markets, uh, whether you're a beginner or you have experience. And you know we're, we're taught, going up, hey, you know what, you gotta have confidence. You gotta believe in yourself. You gotta just, 
You got to go f- go for it. Have faith in yourself. You got to pretty much picture yourself as, hey, you know what? I'm a big deal. I can do it. And, and that's great in many situations in life. However, in trading, not so good because you will be wrong. And not only will you be wrong, you will need to admit this. So you got to admit the fact that you're wrong. So if you're somebody that struggles or just you're so stubborn, you just refuse admitting you are wrong. I mean, if you're having a discussion with somebody and you no, and you just keep arguing and argue. Now, if you have a if you have a true point, that's fine. But if you're just arguing for the sake of admitting that you know what, maybe maybe I am wrong here. So if you're one of those people, then all I can really tell you is trading is not for you. Literally, run, run away from this business because you are going to get crushed. You will get crushed if you are one of those people that just refuses or really, really struggles admitting when you are wrong. Because once again, you will be wrong. Now, the second part of the ego is a person's sense of self-importance. So the tricky part here is that when you are wrong in the business of trading, that means that you're actually losing money. So once you lose money, once you are wrong, once you admit that you are wrong, you now have a mental choice that, that, that's going to pop up. You're going to have a, a choice that you need to make in your mind. You know, you're going to have these little conversations in your mind. Maybe you've already been there. Maybe you've had some conversations. And the mental choice comes down to this. There's two boxes that you're going to need to choose to check. So which one are you going to check after you admit that you're wrong and by admitting you're wrong, you actually lose money? I'm a failure or I'm being wise. That is the box that you need to be checking. Well, I don't know, is it wise? Well, good question, thanks for asking. That leads us right into rule number three, know the bad, okay, the bad. So with this, let's say that you go short on a trade. Quick, maybe if you're a total beginner and not quite sure, go short means you make money when prices or values go down. I have other videos on the topic, but for this, I realize that can sound like a bizarre topic, but yes, in the market, which is really a a freeing thing when you think you can sit there and say, you know, I don't really care what the price does. If it goes up, I can make money. If it goes down, I can make money. In this situation though, again, going short, you wanna see prices go down because if prices go up, you actually lose money. So in this situation, anything that we see going up, not good, all right, that would be bad. So, what if I told you that because you admitted you were wrong, you avoided this monster? $25.50 up to $109 in the same day. Once more, let me really reiterate that. Because you are going short, you don't wanna see prices going high. That price went really, really high in the same day. It's crazy, that is a crazy move. That is really, really bad from a short side, right? Somebody that wants the price to go down. And if the price goes up, that means they are losing money. How about this one? An absolute monster, $17.68 to $152 in two days. Once more, and I know I'm reiterating this, but I get it, some people that are brand new, it's a bizarre concept, but when you go short, when you are short, You want prices to go down, you don't wanna see them go up. And yeah, this one went up a little bit, huh? 1768 up to $152 in two days. That one is just flat out crazy. So seeing this and knowing that, once again, because you admitted that you were wrong, you avoided these situations, what box would you check? Would you check that, oh man, I failed? Or would you check, you know what, wow, I was being wise. I'm pretty sure you would check I was wise. So think about, I mean, that's why you are actually being wise. When you set the ego aside, it's not that you're a failure, it's well, you are focused on being a wise trader. Another part of being a wise trader is rule number four, the true cost of business. Now yes, there's cost of business as a trader, And I should note that you should be treating this as a business, all right? I mean, you need to take this stuff serious. And so it is uh, a business and that's the the, the mindset that you should be going in. Now, do you need to have a CEO and a board of directors and all? I'm not talking about that type of business, but the mentality is, hey, if I wanna make this an ongoing stream of income, I need to have somewhat of a business mentality and treat this seriously. I I don't wanna treat this as a casino. So 
The cost of business, of course, you're gonna have technology. You're gonna have what well, what setups, what you know, what sort of setup should I use? You're gonna what sort of brokers are good. And and that's true, but again, we gotta peel back the layers more and figure out what's going to be required to actually have success. Because you can have all three of those, but who cares? That that that's not gonna help you do anything. What really matters is the true cost of business, which is the cost of whys. Now instead of trying to to talk about this in theory, I'm just gonna show you some of my results so you can see exactly how this plays out. So here are some of the results uh, from a particular day of my trading, and this happened on uh, November 5th, and I just bring that up because you know that'll, that'll make a little bit more sense with the, the next part. But the main point here is, hey, remember NXTC? Remember that one? That was an absolute monster? And yes, I, I, I went short on it, meaning I wanted to see that price go down. But as you saw, that price did not go down, and ultimate, and it you know uh, ultimately led to me losing two thousand and forty dollars. Which I mean, that's not pleasant. I'm not going to sit here and say, yeah, and I loved every second of it. That was great. No, that it's not enjoyable. It's not fun. But you know what? Think back to the ego rule. That also doesn't mean that I'm a failure. That just means that you know what? I, I was being as wise as possible, and that thing was an absolutely crazy, crazy stock, and I ended up losing $2,040 on it. So let's take a look at some real life application here. So in the following days, remember that all happened on the 5th, you can see right there on the 7th, $1,500. All right, nice. And then on the 13th, 2150. And then on the 19th, 2700, which equates to 63 or 63, no, that would be real bad, $6,350. But again, let, let's take a second here. Verse what? The cost of being wise? Pff, awesome, done. I, I was wise, cost of, you know, the true cost of business, there we go. That loss has been wiped away, I'm well in the green. Or the cost of ego. So remember NXTC, that's what that did. What happens if the ego came about? What happens if I just got way too overconfident and just didn't follow the rule, the very rules that I'm talking about right now? I mean, how big would that have loss have been? Ten thousand dollars? Twenty? Thirty? I mean, that a third fifty thousand? That's not unreasonable at all. Seeing, I mean, the stock literally went in the same day from twenty five fifty to up over a hundred dollars in the same day. So ten thousand. Now that I'm talking out loud, I probably should have put in an even bigger number there. But I guess the question marks kind of throw out the fact that it it could have been ten thousand. It could have been a whole lot more had I not been focused on the cost of being wise. And that's crazy to think that I could have had these you know solid days here. And you know, equated and, and got myself back to six thousand three hundred fifty, but still been massively in the hole because of one trade, because the cost of ego of you know got me got a hold of me instead of me focusing on the cost of being wise. I mean, that is crazy. That is why you got to know the bad. Things can get really bad out there. You got to know the bad because when you know the bad, it's going to help you focus more so on the cost of being wise. And this is the benefit of it. It's just be wise. It's not pleasant. I'm not sitting here saying that you're going to enjoy the experience of being wise and taking the loss. But I, I assure you, it's much better than the cost of ego where when you take the loss, it is massively bigger than it would have been had you just been focused on the cost of wise from the get-go. And then rule number five, ABA, W-I-I-W. What? Always be asking, what if I'm wrong? Always be asking, what if I'm wrong? Because this is how trading works. A trader has a choice within every single trade before they get started. Before they get into the trade, they have two pathways they can go down. They can be focused on a controlled loss, or I'm here to win. I don't need no loser's mentality, I'm not gonna lose. I'm here to win. I, my entire life I was brought up to have faith in myself, to believe in myself. I am gonna win. Let's get to it, let's go. And you know what? Wow, if this was a sporting event or really anything, that's a great attitude to have. That's a fantastic attitude to have. I applaud you for that attitude, let's go. I'm here to win. But we're not playing sports. We're trading, there's money on the line. And it's not a video game. You can't hit the reset button. If you lose money, it's gone. And it's not, you know, government insured. 
It has gone to somebody else, took your money in the market. That's how the market works. So you know what? Let's focus on just keeping the losses controlled. Let's, let's focus on being wise in this manner. So how exactly do you do this? Well, you do it with A-B-A-W-I-I-W. And the way I envision it, and this is what you need to be doing. So this is how you pick that path. This is how you get yourself on the thought process of a controlled loss. There is you, okay, that's you. And can you guess what the other thing is? Ego. Get your ego out of here. And when you get the ego out of there, that opens up everything else. Now the rules build on one another. What can help you do that to ego? Well, when you know the bad, right? If you know the bad and you know just how nasty things can get out there, you know what, it, it makes shoving your ego much easier to do when you're like, you know what? I, I get it, ego, I, I know what you're trying to do, but things can get really bad if I don't follow rules. So you know what, I'm just gonna stay focused on the whole idea of what if I'm wrong? Because if, if I focus on that, then that's going to force me to, all right, yeah, well, let's, let's put together a wise trade plan. So that's what you need to do. Get ego out of the way. And to bring this full circle, is a controlled loss wise or unwise? Well, of course, that would be wise. And what's rule number one? To lose money wisely. So these are the five rules you need to be following. You need to have... At, I was gonna say not in the back of your mind, but in the forefront of your mind. Because when you do this, you're going to be focused on the right things, and the right things has everything to do with managing risk, risk control. Making sure that losses don't spin out of control and you have some sort of train wreck, which does exist. You gotta know the bad, that's why that rule's in there. Train wrecks happen to people that allow them to happen. But if you focus on rule number five here, then you know what? You're not gonna allow it to happen because you're actually gonna be acknowledging, you know, no ego, I, I could be wrong. So what if I am wrong? What, what is my trade plan going to do? And that's gonna keep you and keep your account safe. So hopefully you enjoy these five rules and uh, you know can apply them and are going to start to focus on them. If you found this video helpful, then a few things here. Please hit that like button, leave a comment, and ultimately subscribe to the channel. I'm not a big fan of when people, you watch your video for two seconds and they're like, hey, hit the like button. It's like, why would I hit the like button? Or hey, subscribe to my channel. But at this point, I would encourage you to check out the channel and hopefully you ultimately decide to subscribe. Also, like I said, hit that like button. And if you're interested in my site, just claytrader.com, you can go there and learn more about what I offer and all of that. Uh, but get out there, focus on those five rules because those truly are the top five rules for traders that everybody needs to follow. Again, whether you're a beginner to the stock market or options market or forex market or futures market, doesn't matter. These rules apply to everybody, no matter what you're trading or what style. So if you're a swing trader, if you're a day trader, if you're an investor, these rules need to be those top five that you go down each and every time. So thanks for hanging out. Hit that like button, leave me a comment down below and hopefully you decide to subscribe to the channel and get out there and like I said, start applying those five rules. First off, thanks so much for watching the entire video. Real quick, before you go, I wanna invite you to a live webinar, web class, training, workshop, online event, whatever you wanna call it, but it will be me live revealing to you what I discovered that has allowed me to transform myself from being an employee to being my own boss, including how I had only one losing day out of 73 days in total. I'm going to cover three keys that have helped me unlock profitable consistency within the markets. The first key is super weird, but in a productive type of way. The second key is super awesome because it quite literally is wired into our DNA as humans, making it very easy to use. But in a cruel way, this becomes a pitfall for many traders. I'll explain it all though, including how to avoid the pitfall that it creates for some. And yeah, the third key, when you hear it, sounds way too good, way too, good to be true, but it's not, and I'll show you how it all works. Then at the end, I open it up for a question and answer session that is, again, totally live. Even if you can't make the live session, please still sign up as it will be recorded, and you can go back and watch the replay that I will send you. Click the image on the screen or click the link down in the description box so you can get the date and time and claim your spot, which I should note is limited due to the fact that this truly is a live event. If you have any questions, let me know. If not, I'll be seeing you soon.